What's up, fellas? It's old-timey pilot JM here. Today, we're playing the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator released mere hours ago. Okay, I'm not gonna do the I'm not gonna do the old-timey voice for the whole thing. But Microsoft Flight Simulator, I've been waiting for this game for 16 years, I believe. Maybe it was 14 years. It's been over a decade since the last entry in the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, franchise has been released. And this is an extremely exciting one. I think even if you're not a Sim fan like I am, this game is really incredible. And like, actually it represents like a huge step forward in gaming technology, in my opinion. So uh, we're gonna start out, how about we just do a nice little local flight around Chicago, which, you know, I live here, so. Let's fly the, uh, I want to fly the Icon, Icon A5. This is a fun one to fly in Chicago. You'll see why. So yeah, when you're picking your flight points, it's kind of sick. You just have this earth and you know, you pick where you want to depart and where you want to arrive. Uh, actually, I'm just going to depart from the main runway. Yeah, there's other players and it, it's, it's crazy how... I'm not going to get, I'm going to slowly introduce all the insane stuff that is happening in this game, but there's a lot going on. So first of all, it has live multiplayer. It's a shared world. So you hop on and you see other planes flying around. Those are real planes. And then there's live traffic as well, meaning real planes that are flying around are also in the game, like real planes in real life. Their data is fed through an API so you can see real planes. So if you know your friend is flying at a specific time, you can actually find his plane, I think. I guess that's how it works. Live weather. We're going to go ahead and activate live weather. It's a beautiful afternoon today in Chicago, so I think that'll be perfect. And uh, we're ready to go. Let's take off. So yeah, if you want, you can start with the plane off and everything. And you know, you have to configure everything and follow all the checklists and stuff. But uh, we just want to take a look around. so. We're going to go ahead and take off, but first I have to remember to take off the parking brake. Turn that off. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to ignore ATC here. Oh! <laughs> 747 just spawned in front of me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're just going to follow him, okay? You would never do this in real life because his jet stream would blow me off the runway. But I don't think that's simulated here. In multiplayer, at least. <laughs> okay, we're at like uh, 55 knots. That should be good to take off. Let's get the landing gear up. Uh, let me know if the volume's too loud or anything like that. Let's get rid of our flaps. And uh, we can turn off our GPS there. Uh, so yeah, we're up and flying, guys. So in addition to all the stuff that I showed, uh, the major breakthrough with this game is the terrain, okay? So this game's terrain is absolutely unreal. Uh, so basically, the way that older sim flight simulator games worked is like, you know, developers have to, artists have to go in and build buildings and stuff, model them in Maya or whatever. And then those get added to the game. And that, because this is the whole world, it's not possible for the developers to model every building everywhere. So you can't find your house or whatever, because, you know, they can only model the buildings that actually are like big and important and recognizable. But this game, they're using um, Bing Maps data. So basically what they've done is they have an AI that looks at the topography data from Bing Maps and it uses various techniques to recognize like, oh, this is a tree, this is a building, and whatever. And it builds the 3D landscape based on that Bing Maps data. So the entire world is here and it all looks like it does in real life. You can find your house and it will roughly look the same as it does in real life. Yeah, there's basically like three levels of detail. There's just the normal level of detail where all the terrain is generated algorithmically based on 2D Bing Maps data. And Chicago, that's what Chicago is like. I Maybe? 
Actually, maybe I'm wrong about that. And then there, there's another level of detail that's higher that I think Chicago might be where uh, they have 3D, um, 3D like telemetry data. I don't know if that's the word, but basically they have data on like all the buildings and stuff. So they have they can build 3D models of them. And so if you go to like Bing Maps, it'll have 3D buildings for a lot of cities because they built it out of this data. So cities that have that data available will be in higher detail. The buildings will more closely match the real thing. And I think most major cities in the world are like that, but not like more minor cities. Those are going to be like the default level of detail, which is still really good. The, the, the algorithmically generated level of detail is still really good, but um, the 3D like really accurate buildings are pretty mind blowing. And then the highest level of detail is buildings that are actually made by an artist. Uh, there aren't that many of those, but like if you go to New York, like the Brooklyn Bridge, an artist made it, the Statue of Liberty. So those look like perfect. Those look like, you know, up close, you can see all the detail and stuff. But the stuff that's built out of like uh, Bing Maps data, it looks incredible from up in the sky. Like this looks so real. Uh, when I make this into a video, I'm going to overcut footage of what the last game looked like, Flight Simulator X. And it's insane, like, how good this looks. It's, it's actually unreal. So I figure maybe we can uh, fly over here by downtown, take a look at some of the buildings. Uh, and then, you know, we'll find our way north to our destination airport. Yeah, there's moving cars and stuff. There's even moving people at the airports. But I don't believe there's people out and about in the world. Here, let me lower my altitude a little bit. So we'll follow along the river. By the way, fun fact. So this strip up here, this used to be Meigs Field, M M Migs Field, which was an airport. And it was the default airport for flight simulator games for a long time. You would always fly out of that field right into downtown Chicago. So that was cool. But they destroyed the airport in real life, uh, I don't know, like 20 years ago. So it's not there anymore, sadly. But we do have two international airports in Chicago. Midway, which we left out of on the west, si west side. And then O'Hare on the north side, which will be our destination. I recommend if you have the choice, fly in and out of Midway. It's a lot less crowded. But sometimes you don't have a choice depending on what airline you're in. Uh, so what I found, the only major disappointment about... Chicago in this game is that the bridges go all the way down to the water. I really hoped you can see like along the river there's just all these bridges and in real life boats can go under them but in here unfortunately they left no clearance. You cannot fly under the bridges which is very disappointing to me. Uh, right here is the Merchandise Mart. This is a very famous building in Chicago. It has its own zip code. It has its own train station. In terms of square footage, it's one of the biggest buildings in the area. Let's make a right here to continue following. I'm going way, way too fast because I'm just like pointing the nose down. Hopefully I don't break the plane. I have all the damage and stuff turned on, so it's possible I could overstress the plane. So yeah, like my, my dream was to go fly under those bridges, but unfortunately you can't. Oh, look, there's a little boat down there. And some cars going. That would be Lakeshore Drive right there. Uh, this is a cool building, I believe. Oh, wait, maybe I don't know this building. There, here's uh, Navy Pier. You can see the Ferris wheel. Big tanker boat there. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll go out to the Lake Michigan a little bit, and then we'll turn around so we can get a better view. What's that thing, I wonder? I wonder if that's a bug or what. Or maybe it's like a <laughs> it's like buried treasure or something, who knows. So yeah, there there are some like weird bugs because this is algorithmically generated. There is some weird stuff. Like sometimes you like see a tree growing in the middle of a house or something because the AI thought it saw a tree there. But for the most part, like the accuracy is just incredible. So let's turn around. Ooh, big boat. So here's the reason why I chose the Icon A5 as my plane to fly. 
um, is because this is also a seaplane. So that's fun. Let's see if we can take it down here on the water. It's it's amphibious. Oh yeah, let me flaps. We're gonna need some flaps to create drag here. Just let our airspeed drop, flare. There we go. And uh, there's even, there's a button in here uh, to turn on the rudder. So if you look there in the back, now I have a, a water rudder. You can kind of see it poking out the back of the plane. That helps steer more than just the air rudder. So yeah, this plane is so much fun to fly. And, and I just wish that we could, we could boat our way under the bridges in the city, but unfortunately that doesn't work. So yeah, here's downtown Chicago. What's fun, if you're ever here, if you're ever here in the city, um, you can take an architectural boat tour. A boat will drive through the uh, through the river, and you can get ones that go out on the lake, and it's really amazing. So let me show you another fun feature of this game is the live weather system. So we're at live weather right now, which means what it is outside my apartment right now is exactly what we're seeing in the game. But we can change it to whatever we want. Let's go few clouds, and then you can change the time of day in real time. So if you're trying to impress a lady, guys, take one of the boat tours that goes down on, on the lake. Do it around sunset. It's magic, guys. So yeah, th this is absolutely beautiful at sunset. And, and like the lighting engine in this game is so incredible. It's, it's so crazy how good this game looks. And look, we can like... Bring clouds, make the clouds bigger. Uh, I think we can add precipitation. You can make it snow in July. Let's see how this looks from the inside of the plane. Oh, we're not quite getting rained on yet. Here, let's add some lightning. So yeah, you can go crazy with it. You can get really, really elaborate, but let's go back to live weather. And uh, I think we're ready to take back off. Just do one notch of flaps here. See, so yeah, it can be it can be hard to get up to speed in the water. The water adds a lot of drag, but I believe. Oh, we're about to hit the barrier. Okay, we're good to go. Good to go, boys. Let me remember to uh, turn that rudder back off. Okay. Let's just see a few more sights here. Here's a nice little uh, fountain. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually turn it back to real time so that there we go so that it's a little brighter out so we're coming up on the museum campus here uh, on the left there I believe that is the shed aquarium and then this building we're about to pass over on the right is the field museum where you can see our beautiful T-Rex skeleton, Sue. Up here is the stadium where the uh, Cubs play. Did I say Cubs? I meant Bears. <laughs> you guys are right. Uh, the Cubs is a baseball team. There's the planetarium. And uh, let's just make our way over to O'Hare. Here, I wanna, I wanna buzz this. Uh, I wanna buzz this tanker real quick. Here, let's 
Let's see what this guy's got going on down here. How's it going, boat people? Another fun activity, if you're ever in Chicago, is stand on a bridge and just wave at people on boats as they go under. It never gets old. Is this available on console? It's coming to Xbox eventually, but it is not yet. It's made by Microsoft, so it's not going to be on anything other than Xbox and PC, but... But yeah, let's fly over the pier again. Say what's up to this tanker. Man, this game just looks so good. Yes, it is on Games Pass. That is correct. It's on PC Games Pass. But unfortunately, you do not get all of the Deluxe Edition planes, and I, I needed all those planes, so... I shelled out big money for the Deluxe Edition. Because I wanted every single plane. Alright, what's up, big boat? Alright. Let's, uh, let's figure out where we're going real quick. Over there. Seems good enough. Here, we'll fly by, uh... What's this one called again? Uh... <laughs> it's embarrassing that I can't think of it. Um... The Willis Tower. No, not the Willis Tower. The, uh... Oh god, chat, help me out. Yes, th thank you, the Hancock Building. Um, you can go up here and they have, they have a floor where, uh, the glass goes out at an angle and you stand up on it. I did it once, uh, with my parents and it was a harrowing experience to say the least. There's the Sears Tower, AKA the Willis Tower in the back. And there is the Trump Tower right in front of us. I keep getting distracted. Let, let's just go to where we're going, guys. Yes, you can fly literally anywhere on the globe. That is correct. Anywhere that there's an airport, which is basically everywhere. I wonder if you can go to the South Pole. That's an interesting question, if you can go to Antarctica. I never actually thought about that. But yeah, people have already... People who got the game early, they've done stuff like go to Area 51. Um... Everyone goes and they find their house. I'm not going to show you guys where I live because I don't want to dox myself. But, you know, I live in the general Chicago area. So, yeah, it's pretty sick, man. And, like, just the level of detail is absolutely unreal. So, here, I want to get there a little faster so we can turn up the speed of the sim. Here's a pro tip. If you want to get to O'Hare, you can you can generally... Oh, God. You can generally follow... This road here. So, yeah, you can do, like... You can do, like, cross-country flights. And, of course, most people don't want to sit at their computer for eight hours or whatever. So, you can speed up time or you can warp ahead. We're seeing some other players flying around here. Alright. Back in real time. Let me talk to ATC real quick. Oh god, I gained so much altitude. I don't want that. Okay, so we'll tune to O'Hare. Tower. Let's request a landing. All right, so straight in, runway 28 right. If you guys don't know, here's a pro tip. The numbers on a runway always match the heading. So you can see up here, we're, at, we're about to be at 280. So runway 28 is going to be a heading 280. We got to bleed off some altitude, though. I am way too high. We got to get down to like 1,000 feet, and we are at 4,000 feet. So let's start doing that. 
Oh, I didn't acknowledge. Oops. Oopsie. So yeah, theoretically, air traffic control should make it so that we're not landing on top of other planes and stuff, but uh, there's a lot of people playing the game right now, and that ain't always how it works out, but I believe you can just phase through other planes, so if we crash into someone, it's not the end of the world. I actually have no clue which runway is 28 right, but the uh, auto camera thing is pointing me over there, so I'm going to assume it's that big one. We gotta lose more altitude, man. Yeah, so I'm holding, I'm holding like the interest camera button, which I believe will always point the camera at the runway that you're supposed to land on. So I think I'm landing on that long one. I just need to lose more altitude here. Got the engine to idle, got the nose pointed at the ground. Just don't want to go into overspeed. Here, let's add another layer of, of flaps. I will get the gear down too. This is way too early to have the gear down, but I could kind of use the drag to be honest. So yeah, I'm not like that good at flying, so I'm sure there's probably like experts who are going to watch this and be like, what a scrub. I'm not that good. I'm a casual player, but you know, we're just out here trying to have fun, see the sights. Let's see if we can see the, uh, the colored lights there. So this is another pro tip. So they have these four lights. And if they're white, you're too high. If they're red, you're too low. You want two red and two white. So that helps you uh, find your glide, sclo glide slope. We definitely still have to lose way more altitude here. All right, what do you think? Does that say 28 right? There on the runway? Does that say 28R? Looks like it to me. We could use a little more throttle. All right. Let's get ready for this. So yeah, it, it would not be advisable to land an Icon A5, this tiny two-seat plane, in Chicago O'Hare, one of the busiest airports in the world. This would not be advisable, but because it's a game, we can do whatever we want, so we're going to do it. Let's cut power to idle. We're coming in fast, but... Who really cares? We have way, way more runway than we're ever going to need. Look, see, there we go. Two red, two red, two white. Whoop. It only took us till the very last second to get... To get our two red, two white. All right. We made it in one piece. I'm sorry, what taxiway? Okay, whatever. I have the I have the taxiway ribbons on, which make this way easier. If you like I wish the game had airport maps in it. As far as I know, it doesn't. Like you can pull up the airport here on the GPS, but like there's no indication like what is what taxiway and stuff like that, so you can turn on these big ribbons to help you out. Woo! Pretty successful flight, guys! For, uh... Old-timey pilot JM. 
We made it here in one piece. Oh, wait. Does it not want me to go there? Okay, okay. Listen, I don't care that much. Air traffic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a new flight in just a second. Okay. Not bad, boys. Not bad.